Good morning, Pio Nation. Everyone get in the camera. Hi. I hope you guys are doing well. So let's start with some introductions. My name is Matt Williamson. I'm Jacqueline Lauer. I'm part of the Smash team. And I am Corey McFan. And you are watching Marietta College Esports. The moment has arrived. We have been waiting since November to start up the competitive season. And here we are. How excited are you guys? <laughs> I am really excited. I'm, I am want to see my team do well. I'm really excited too, especially since I can compete this semester. Yes. <laughs> now, that won't be until a little bit later today. Corey will be uh, competing on the Overwatch team. But we are getting things set up, and it looks like they're already in the lobby, so we're just going to really quickly go over some things. So first, we're debuting our very own Smash team for the first time in Marietta College history. So we have starting, I believe the order, I think Peyton Angle is playing first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm guessing it's going to be Zach. I'm trying to, yeah, Zach Lane, he'll be playing. And then at anchor and team captain, Mason Rice. Uh, we'll be playing, and then of course we have our head coach, uh, Derek Games. So for Smash Brothers, it is a 3v3 crew battle. And so the way that works is, if you've never seen a crew battle, it's still 1v1, but it's a shared stock. So everyone has three stock each, so uh, Marietta will have nine stock total, Alma will have nine stock, and then whoever wins, whatever stock they have remaining, that's what they have to start with in the next game. Uh, so we'll, you'll see how this works as we're getting things uh, underway. We're going to go over a couple of quick announcements uh, while they're getting things set up. Although it looks like it's the uh, the map for the first game will be Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Stadium yeah. or Pokemon Stadium 2 actually. Yeah. That's the one with the platforms. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if the platforms do play a role. So there is a ban process of like certain starter maps and um, counter maps. So to kind of narrow down which ones they are but go over a couple quick announcements uh before the first game starts so first we do want to give a shout out to uh our sponsors hyperx for being the official peripheral sponsor of married to college esports they help provide our facility with keyboards mice headsets mouse pads microphones um, our students absolutely love them if you'd like to get your own hyperx gear you can go to hyperx.gg slash marietta es the qr code is up on your screen for just a few more seconds so you might want to take a screenshot of that uh, but we'll also have the HyperX logo throughout some stuff as well. Also want to give a shout out to Over the Moon Pizza for their support. Uh, every Tuesday they have a Married to College night uh, where you can go get a great price on pizza and drinks. And they will, um, usually they will air our matches. Now we don't have matches on Tuesday necessarily this semester, but they'll re-air some of our prior broadcasts. Uh, so if you're in the Marietta area, go check out Over the Moon Pizza on Front Street. And also another announcement we're going to throw out, we're not completely ready for this yet, but we do want to mention that we are partnering up again with BSN Sports for our annual team shop. Uh, it's not up just yet. We were hoping to get it up today, but had to take care of a couple things. But next week, it could be as early as Monday, but next week you will have your own chance to get Marion College Esports shirts, shorts, pants, backpacks, jackets, hoodies, polos, caps or other stuff and jerseys <laughs> you could get your own married to college esports jersey through this order uh so once we have the the store officially set up we'll get the link out on our social media channels so if you are not following us on twitch twitter facebook youtube instagram tiktok and all those channels this is the time to do it just go to all of that at marietta esports hit that follow button or that subscribe button and that way when we have the shop up you will know right away we're hoping that it'll be up as early as monday but it's only going to be up for a very limited time so this plan accordingly so if you want to get some marietta esports swag definitely do so but all right so it looks like we're still waiting for everyone to be ready. I think that you're going over some communication on Discord. So we'll just throw a couple of announcements while we're while we're doing there. I mean, we're always looking for more uh, students for our esports program. So whether you're a current married to college student or a high school student, we have varsity titles in Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, and Super Smash Brothers and Valorant. We have our facility here on campus. We have several coaches uh, provide support for our students. And for high school sen uh, seniors and college transfer scholarships are available. 
More information for that can be found at our link tree, linktr.ee slash Esports. That's also where you can find our social media channels, so you can definitely check that out. But, all right. So, let's just talk a little bit about this. I mean, you guys have been, so for Jackie, you and the team have been kind of getting prepared for this all last semester. So, how exciting is it to actually finally be in competition? It is amazing to see i have seen a lot of people grow over the time that they've come in i've seen some people come in later and show off some really interesting strategies uh mason has been pretty big with assisting other people with um even characters he didn't know he went out of his way to go try to find okay so what what kind of things would you expect? What would you anticipate? It looks like we might be getting started. And I don't know if Marietta is, I think Marietta is going to be player two. It looks like they're going to go with Cora and they're getting started. So let's get underway. So here we go. Marietta College versus Alma. And it looks like Alma is going to be going with uh, Star Wolf and Marietta will go with Corin. Corin. All right. All right, so immediately starting off, we're trying to see uh, the different ways that these characters are going to be. Oh, sorry, I haven't come. You're fine. <laughs> immediately starting off, they're trying to go a bit more defensive, trying to get the, all those opportunity attacks, because the main thing about Smash is just trying to get your opponent out of the, the uh, stage. Alma taking that quick early lead because Wolf has a lot of early jab attacks. Corrin has some really great range though, especially with that air forward aerial being able to jab in and then if it lands, that kick can also go forward or back. Very, very like challenging move to deal with when it hits. That shields have been used a lot in this battle, it's surprising to me. Looks like Wolf is trying for a meter smash. It's just failed counter from Corrin. And Alma will get first blood, getting one sock onto Peyton. Looks like they're trying for grabs, and now projectiles. Very... Like, that wolf is trying to find all those points where there are gap times in the, in the attacks, the cooldowns. Just out of range. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Peyton was trying to go for a lot of down smash moves, and uh, it seemed like Alma was able to predict it. Getting that grab back onto the platform, That counter and the up specials are part of, like, really great things about Korn's moveset. They are very powerful, both counters and recovery moves that can do damage. It does look like a, both, both players are trying to set up a lot of different combos, but it doesn't look like a whole lot of them are connecting. Well, it's like they're playing very cautious. I mean, both are over 100% damage. I mean, uh, Payton's at 163, so one big smash, and she's going to get knocked out. So try to at least get one stock onto Wolf before losing her stock. It's just going to come down to who just hits that combo, and it does look like uh, Wolf did hit it on the... Another stock from Oh, that's gonna be unfortunate with the up B and just not able to get onto the platform. So that is it's unfortunate because the Alma so the way this is gonna work is um Peyton will swap out. They will still play Wolf. They know they're gonna be playing against Wolf in this second game. And but the problem is since Wolf did not lose any stock, he gets to keep all three of his stock. So there's an entire person that they have to go through as well as the rest of the team. Right. Something I noticed about this particular wolf player, a lot of um, neutral special, a lot of just getting the um, attack up, a lot of like 
not even using smash attacks, but just getting in the higher percentages and then trying to get a full smash. All right, so while we're waiting for this, we do want to give a quick shout out to Scott Sterling NA with the uh, the subscription. So thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. More than you can understand. <laughs> All right, so what happens during this part, and we'll go ahead and just swap over a couple of things here. So let me get a couple of things up. With this being the very first Smash match, we're still trying to figure out the, the structure for all of this. But it looks like, um, it looks like Mason's gonna go in second this time. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he would be the, the third, but I guess they're maybe thinking about the fact that they know that Alma still has all their stock that they need to try to get Mason in earlier to, to see if it can help kind of even it out. So, maybe even take one or two people down with him. Yeah, I mean, Mason's the kind of, he could, could definitely take a few people down without losing all of his stock. And he's bringing out Joker, which remember is his main. Yep. And they've been doing the map bands. We don't know what the map bands are. They're unfortunately. going with Kalos Pokemon League, which has um, partial platforms off of the side, unlike Pokemon Stadium, which we'll see here. Right. Yeah, it looks, looks like Marietta is going to be player one, so we're going to swap over here real quick. Getting a little bit of lag spike here. We should be good in just a second. There we go. Yeah, so Marietta has six stocks. Alma still has all nine of their stocks. So let's see if Mason can try to close that gap on this Star Wolf. A lot of, we got a first count of juggling, grabbing and pushing up your opponent in the air when they can't do anything, going into free falls. One of the most reliable ways to get damage onto people. Arsene has now come out, so part of Joker's um, specialty is having his persona come out. It gives him extra damage and can allow some different changes, but immediately getting that stock. But yeah, so, yeah, we're seeing Star Wolf still doing very well taking one stop off of Mason. A lot of spacing. Both trying to play defensive and trying to just get that dash attack off. Oh, that grab and throw with the plasma. Oof. It gets back onto the platform. Base is trying to look for the right opportunity to land some hits. But Star Wolf is, does some very decent melee damage. Look at them trying to make a play off the platform and both get back on. Our sin is now gone. Once again, it does look like a, a lot of combos are being missed here just because of how defensive both players are playing. It's going to come down to who hits those combos at the end of the day. Yep. You can't dodge him forever. So but nice it looks hit. like Wolf is going a lot more for his neutral special. Meanwhile, Mason is using that very sparingly. He's got his persona back up, so we'll see if he can be able to make a try to get a stock. They're both pretty high on the uh, damage percentage, but Ooh. Mason gets taken out! Very unfortunate for Mason to lose two stock when Alma is on such a high percentage too. Yeah, I mean just one good hit will take care of it, but the fact that he still has all three of his stock. And still has like masterful recovery. Shut his back up. And there we go, Mariana strikes. Go. 
the grab wind, shielding. Yeah, Mason's gonna have to try to find some quick hits because Oh that could that 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 was huge. I mean it's definitely a misplay by Wolf, but we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> very, very big for Marietta right there. It it almost seemed like both characters just like switch spaces. I'm not sure if that's something that Joker has the ability to do if that was just an extreme misinput. Well, I think with Wolf's dash, he can't do an up B, like when he, when he would do those dashes. So he dashed off the platform, he was just not able to jump back up. That makes sense, yes. And once again, playing defensively. Oh, getting in that little juggle. Wolf guarding right as Arsen comes back up. But this is very The counter has gotten off. Wolf jumps over the fire. And that is going to be Mason eliminated, getting Wolf down to one stock, but now it's going to be up to Zack to take on three members from Alma. Seven stock. That's going to be a bit of a comeback story if he can pull this off. It can happen, though. I mean, the one advantage is in this next game, because the way the crew battle works, Wolf is going to have to jump off and lose his first two stocks, so he's going to start with one. So if... So even if, like, Zack takes a lot of damage early on, if he can take out Wolf without losing a stock, then he'll have three full stock, full health going to the next match. And Zack is choosing his main Little Mac. They might be discussing the platform, what stage they're going to go for right now because every character has a different play style and Little Mac specifically does not do well with platforms. So it's most likely they're gonna be looking through the different ones to see if there are any ones that are not, that haven't been banned that they can use. Yeah, we're getting just a little bit of a, a little lag spike. So to, in order to watch this, um, this match, we are having to use NDI, so we're actually having this on another computer and feeding it through through NDI. So there may be sometimes a couple of little spike through the uh, the connection, but we could still see everything that's going on. We'll be fine. Don't don't panic if it uh, freezes for a second or two. A fascinating choice. They're going with Hollow Bastion for their for the choice. Now, here's where Wolf is going to have to drop his stocks at the start of the match and this is going to be something that we're first going to be seeing. Wolf is going to go drop off his two stocks yeah. and then they're going to have to do an emote to let them know when they're ready. So that's going to be a little bit of time and there's the taunt and they are ready to go in. And immediately Little Mac is trying to stay away from Wolf going for that counter, trying to using a great forward smash to get right back onto that platform. Oh, forward smash, forward air. Little Mac has one of the best damage outputs of any of the fighters within Super Smash Brothers. However, one of his biggest cons is he is not very good in the air. So we're seeing a lot of, while other characters like Corrin and, um, Joker, we're jumping around a lot. We're seeing a lot of dashes and a lot of attacks from Little Mac. I think it's if Little Mac, if Zach can land, uh, he lost his KO. But let's say, even though he's taking a lot of damage, all he has to do is just get one stock off of Wolf. And he's just able to get back onto the platform. He got and the then that's what you need. That is big for Marietta right there. Exactly what they needed. Yeah. It, Despite the fact, that's what I was trying to get the point at. Zach took a lot of damage, but because he was able to take down without losing any stock, now he gets back to full health with three stock. So Marianne is not out of this yet, and this is a best of three. Now, because Alma has lost, Alma will be choosing the next stage, so it's most likely they will go with something that is not Hollow Bastion. They'll probably choose something that's best for their character. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing though is Zack is stuck with Mac. I mean he, he loves playing Mac, but that does mean Alma has an opportunity to Okay, so just got sometimes this happens 
Um, so they're just going to get everything recreated. So we're just going to swap over to the uh, the camera real quick uh, while we are uh, waiting for it. So we'll just swap over here for a second. But okay. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the, the situation now. So Zach has to play Little Mac here on out. So that means that Alma could choose a character that would counter Mac. Absolutely. One of the characters that we've seen counter Mac before are a lot of zoner characters. So you, your Mega Mans, your Samuses, um, anyone that has good range can immediately come in and try to get Mac up into the air. Because again, his weak point is all those aerials. So like if you have um, a Pit or a Sora who is really wanting to use their up tilts, that's going to be detrimental. Mm -hmm. But all right, so while we're waiting, let me go ahead and get a couple things updated. So actually, I'm going to do this. Let's get the, there we go. Wait, that's not correct. There we go, there we go. First stream for a while, just getting everything all set up. And that way, as a reminder of where we're at with remaining stock while we're trying to get the, the lobby set up. Because... You know what it's like sometimes playing online with the, with the Nintendo Switch. It can be a little little hiccup. So we're getting the lobby recreated, get everyone in. So it's going to take a second, but we'll get back into this game uh, very soon. But I think there's been like a little bit of the first game jitters, it seems like. But I think they're starting to kind of feel, kind of get more of a rhythm. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. So they're just getting the, the new lobby code, so they're putting that in. Do have a bit of lag spike going on again. Well, that, that's okay. We got a lot of things running. Yeah, but okay, we're, it looks like we're back into the lobby. And so we should be starting up very soon. And it looks like they're going to go with Kirby. Jigglypuff. Oh, sorry. Why did I say Kirby? It was pink. <laughs> they're both pink. And they're pink. both pink. Yeah, it's Jigglypuff. There we go. And close, close enough. Close, close enough. enough. They're still they, it on looks, Bastion. Still, yeah, it looks pretty similar. It's a, it's a Pokemon. I, I feel horrible now because I, I, I need to give up my video game card because there's no reason for me to mistake Kirby for Jigglypuff. They are playing very defensively. They are not wanting to get near each other. Jigglypuff has a one-hit KO move known as rest, but they need to get into their opponent's actual hitbox in order to land it. But once it's landed, it's an immediate toss. Looks like they're also trying to go for their jabs and kicks. So Zach is going to want to build up his KO meter as well to see if he can get those instant kills. That grab to try to get him off the ledge. Now Jigglypuff is a very floaty character, so trying to get that off that off the ledge play. Oh, that, that dodge! That spot dodge, but the KO meter has been just missed the KO punch. Yeah, that was unfortunate. And as you're talking about the Jigglypuff being like a floaty type character, that's gonna make it difficult for Zack to try to do any attacks in the air. And already as Little Mac, that's already difficult. Um, instead of like forcing Little Mac into the air, it seems like almost trying to like bait out Little Mac's attacks. Oh, but that is done detriment. That's a bad play on their part, as Zach has been. Looks like that was another spot dodge, but from Marietta. Zach getting in very quick jabs, which again, due to Mac being so, being such a great ground fighter, his jabs do the most out of any character in Smash Brothers. Okay, got a little bit of a spike. We should be back in just a second. Something happened. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we're back. Jigglypuff and Mac at pretty high percentages, but not quite 100. And while Jigglypuff is a light character and easy to spike, Jigglypuff also has really good recovery. Looks like they go and they went for the rollout, but went the wrong way. That is 
You hate to see it, but we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> the baiting and is not really working out for Alma as they keep inching close, but. Zach's already leading to a ton of damage. Jiggly about already at more. And oh my hey, god! Without hey. dropping a stock! I 100%. Folks, is the reverse sweep a dream? Is it. Can this happen? Uh, apparently, it's down to a 1v1 at this point. 3v3 stock. But the question is, will they go with the zoner? We'll see, because we don't know. I, cause I'm wondering, because I mean, I, I, this is just my speculation. I'm thinking all the leg with their best person to try to like clean sweep. So with Wolf taken out, I don't. We don't know who that third person is from Alma. I don't know if it's their anchor or it could be somewhere between. But I mean, we're it's now to a one v one, three full stock each. It doesn't get much any closer than this. But I mean, Zach just played that so well. Like just being able to deal a ton of damage to Jigglypuff, not losing a stock. I, I, I have lost the words. Even when Sing came out from Jigglypuff, he immediately was able to get his hit off before that Sing entered the hitbox for Little Mac. Oh, you can see the hype from Zach right now. He's... And not to mention the pressure of knowing that you're the last one on your team and you have to take down three other people. The pressure must be like crazy, but he took down two of them with ease. Looks like we're going with small battlefield now. This one has closer platforms and they're playing with the Lucina. Not too familiar with her, but I'm not, I don't think she has any magic unlike Robin or Sora sword characters. All right, this is it. Whoever wins this will take game one, folks. So if you think Zach can do the reverse sweep, get that hype in the chat. We're already seeing a very aggressive play from uh, Oh, Lucina. with that expert counter. Playing aggressive can be great, but if your opponent knows how to counter and is able to read your patterns, they, they can easily punish that. We got the forward air from Little Mac to get right back onto the stage. A near perfect shield. That counter, the lingering counter. Little Mac has his KO punch ready. Oh, but it looks like he's down stock and has lost the KO punch in the process. Yeah. Maybe a little lag to shoot back soon, but that's the one thing about, about Little Mac. All oh, his mobility is limited. I mean, his jabs hit a ton. I mean, he's doing like 15, 20% damage for every hit. So if he can get a couple hits, he can get right back into it. Sometimes even 30. Because that was a 64 to 76%. Pretty incredible for just a simple jab. Ooh, but that grab from Lucina. See them playing a bit more cautious. It is a lot grab of stick. Grab the jab to the uppercut. Lucina is at 100%. Could be great to launch immediately. Ooh, but another... Off and once again, right when he got the KO meter. Ooh. Oh, oh I hate is... to see that. The miss input with the air dodge instead of the up B. Little bit of a misplay from Marietta right there. Yeah. All right, so with that, Alma will take game one, but you have to give credit to Zach for getting, I mean, it was three to one, 
but getting all the way to the last person, you, you got to give credit where credit's due. That, Absolutely. That takes a lot of skill to do. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're immediately getting into their next game, starting off with Mason as Joker. Oh, so they're going to be like, well, we're going to lead with our anchor now. So we're going to try to see if he can build up a lead, and then that way Zach and Peyton can kind of clean up. So now we'll just have to see uh, what field uh, they'll be playing on, who they're going to be going up against. And it looks like another uh, connection issue with the arena. So it looks like I have to recreate the lobby. So I'll tell you what, let's take a quick breather just while we're waiting for them to, because it's going to take a couple minutes for them to get it set, but once they're ready to go, we'll be back. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we, get, when we return, we'll get to game two of this very exciting inaugural Super Smash Brothers match between Marriott College and Alma University. So don't go away. We'll be right back.
All right, and welcome back. Uh, we got the lobby set up, and they're getting into uh, things. It looks like, what was the map again? It looks like the map is that's either Smashville or Town and City. Well, we're about to find out, but uh, looks like Marietta will be leading with Mesa on Joker, and Alma's gonna go with Link. They're player two. Marietta's player two. Yeah, yeah. over there. Remember Three. this one is. Right, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Although, and an immediate wrap, oh, immediately trying to go for the juggle strategy with Joker, a very reliable one, and getting those quick jabs, getting off the fire. Although it looks like I will just mention to everyone, there is a flaw in the overlays off the picture that for the last time. Alma has taken game one, not Marietta. And right now it shows that Mary's taking game one, and I don't have a way to fix it until outside the stream, so we apologize for that. But Alma does has taken game one. Joker took Link's bomb and then dropped it. Looks like it hasn't been able to go off. Now it has and not hit anyone. It looks like this is actually town and city, so this one is a unique stage where the stage hazards not exactly on, but they're built into the entire... And Marietta takes the first stock. Looks like both both players have come out really strong here, and Marietta was just able to, like, hit those combos and, like, just take that first stock. Very strong start for Marietta. Long hit, but, like, seemed like no damage was taken. Arsene is now out, but Joker is high high percentage, so easier to launch. So it's now evened up. There's a bomb on the screen, but will it blow up with someone? Yep. Once again, trying the juggling, getting off good percentage on Link. Arsene is now out again, higher damage, and looks like Mason isn't using the stronger fight. There it is. And once again, trying to go for that juggle, but the platform's getting in the way, so that is something that some characters will struggle with when it comes to the strategies with the placement of platforms. That's where it all comes down to the stage choices. Did freeze a little bit, but we are back. And... Link is at 107%, but it looks like Mason's trying to chase for that for that off stage kill and got baited. But now Link is launched, it's 1v1, the bomb is now off the stage, and once again going for that starting juggle to get that good percentage off. Looks like they were both going for their neutral specials. Link trying to use that upbeat not only to get back on the stage, but also assuming to like, trying to damage Joker. And a couple good hits, nice smash there. Going for that chase. Going for that chase, get the grab from Link. Could be big. Not quite enough. But our sin is now out, so let's see if a good use of the projectile um, defense. So what some shields can do is they can reflect uh, projectiles back at the opponent, and that was a good counter. And, and nice hit there. So Marion will take the first I game there. Oh. You can see the drive from Mason there to take down that first player and make it to that, maybe try to chip away at the second. However, he did lose two stock in the process going after those uh, chases off stage. To me, that seems like a little bit of a risk because one wrong move and you're off. Right, but I think 
even with that, if that was the same player who started with Wolf in the first game, then I think Mason's gonna hope if he can at least try to take down a couple of stock here and still keep that lead when swapping off to either Peyton or Zach. Really beneficial. And I'm gonna have to see what's going on with the uh, overlay here to see if I can figure out why the uh, the images are incorrect. Let's see here. Let's see if I can fix this on the fly. Let's see here. I don't know if I'm gonna fix this while this stream is up. So that one's left. Let's see over here. It should be. Let me double check as a comparison. What did I do for the Rocket League stream? Because I had. Let's see left. See right. Okay, so that's what I did. All right. So let me see if I can do something here real quick. Make that. See Looks right. like the next stage is Kalos Pokemon League. And it looks like the wolf is coming back in. Okay, so they are swapping sides, so let me adjust this real quick. There we go. I'm gonna try to see if I can fix the uh, the scores while you go ahead and keep commentating. It looks like Alma's immediately trying. And they are ready. They are already laying out their taunts to get the fight started. Freeze it for just a second. It should be back. There we go. Wolf immediately going in for the aggressive attacks. Getting off that damage with the plasma gun, but it looks like Mason is already prepared for the wolf's aggressive strategy. Using an excellent counter as Wolf is. He's not really trying. That was a combo there, but it looks like Wolf is just trying to go off for. Real, at first, trying to go off for those strong attacks, but now it looks like they're going for. a, a down to up tilt combination. Arsene is now gone, and Joker is at a very, very high percentage. And it looks like the down to up has allowed Alma's wolf to... Yeah, this is probably the same wolf from game one, so bring him in to take down Mason. So now it's even up six apiece. And I think I got the, uh, the overlay fixed to make sure it accurately reflects the score. So Alma did take game one. So now we'll see what map we go with here. And it looks like Zach is gonna be playing second, bringing out that little Mac. Also will be Marietta's choice to choose the stage now, so it looks like they're sticking with Kalos Pokemon League, unless Alma goes to ban it. Nope. Preferred stage is being chosen. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they can still choose Hollow Bastion. They're discussing over the uh, the map picks and maybe look at Final Destination. If Final Destination isn't banned for any of them, that'll be huge as it has zero platforms and that can be fantastic for Little Mac. Now they're having over a small battlefield, which does have the platforms. Oh, we might be seeing Kalos. Your guess is good as mine at this point. 
looks like they are in a very deep discussion about what would be best, not only for Little Mac, but also to avoid that wolf. With how aggressive it played, and the fact that Zack has only had to play it by taking down one stock, he is now facing a three stock Alma Wolf. And it will be Kalos. Immediately taking into account how aggressive Wolf plays by getting in spot dodges and great jabs. Great use of the shield, but unfortunately, that. Got a great counter. Yeah. That sounded like an even took you off guard. <laughs> nice jab there. I was saying before, I mean, that's the thing with Middle Mac. Oh. He, his jabs hit really hard, so if he can get a couple hits, it can put uh, Wolf in a, a tight in spot. Very good launching range. That was a perfect parry, so when that happens, both attacks are nullified. Wolf is now in launching range. You can see that smoke coming off of the uh, character's sprite. Looks like they're both still playing defensively, though. And Little Mac does have the KO punch, so... That may lead to Wolf playing a lot more aggressive, trying to get Mac off of the... Oh, just barely missing that KO punch. Oh, that great counter. The Looks like he did take a bit of damage from possibly splash attack that the wolf, Wolf's claws have. Ridiculously high percentages and able to spot dodge out of that. Trying to land a full smash. And Wolf takes the first stock off of Little Mac, but again, still very high percentage. And one good hit from Little Mac that's not shielded could easily take Wolf out. He's just waiting for the opportunity, but doesn't quite get it. Counter tried to see aggression, but did not. But with an uppercut, and Wolf using its inf invincibility frames to immediately go into the attack, so that way Zach can't do anything. You don't often see that. Here is up again. Can he get a hit? Has not been able to land a KO all uh, series. Oh, but lands an uppercut. The up B with damage. And that saved him, I think. Yeah. Try to spend too much time charging up a smash attack. Again, the... You are vulnerable when you try to charge up your smash attacks, but if you can land that, it can be devastating on the opponent. He's taking a lot of damage. It's a nice uppercut there. Use the up B. I think that was a misinput, but thankfully his free fall was not punished by the because Wolf was trying to recover. The uppercut spot dodged and then hit right through. Another use of uppercut. Trying to chase each other off the map. Oof, right as the KO meter charged. It's been a curse all series. As soon as that KO meter pops up, not being able to get her gets not uh, KO. There might be some frustration from Zach, as I can see. He's taking a lot more hits than normal, although almost playing more aggressive. Trying to go oh, get by a great hit there by Zach. 
And it looks like he's... Now, there is a specific thing called edge guarding, but I believe it's when you're guarding the edge from being gotten back on. We have not seen any of the opponents do that all of this series, but... Well, can he get... Ah, oh, does not get the KO meter. He, his dash attack did not go through, and it looks like... Great counterplay. Ah, oh, oh, it's freezing up for a second. All right, we're back. In suspense here. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. that counter that could have saved him just ended too soon. It looked like uh, Alma learned to get Little Neck up in the air to counter him. Well, that's and the thing, because you said he's not very good in the air. So if you can just keep him watching the air, and, and characters like Star Wolf, Fox, Falco, they are insane in the air. They have moods where just the right kind of up smash in the air, and they just go flying, which is exactly what we saw there. So now it's all up to Peyton. If she can take this and then win the next one, we go to game three. Uh, otherwise, Alma will take the series. No pressure, Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. The wolf does play aggressive, and I do know that Peyton loves using those counters and the up B to punish. So if Peyton can get those off reliably and time that wolf, there can be some really great things for Marietta. And so they are going to go with Hollow Bastion. Hollow Bastion. So it looks like Marietta's ready, so now we're just waiting for Alma to be ready. And here we go. Let's see if Marietta can take out Wolf and get to the last player for Ulma. Wolf will have to lose two to stock initially. And here we go. Immediately trying for that counter. Wolf goes for a grab and a down throw. Oh, but the forward air. It looks like because counters can be, um, counters and shields can be easily broken because of grabs. It looks like Wolf is already trying that with Corrin and immediately trying to go for, a, looks like a juggle strategy, but not quite. We're seeing Wolf trying to do as much damage as he can, because with only one stock, he wants to try to see how many stock can he take down before he gets Ooh, eliminated. Oh, input! The shockwave from the attack was able to hit Wolf, but... Yeah, just a lot of dodging left and right. Peyton knows what's at stake, but Wolf, but Wolf is looking for opportunities to get some damage out. Shield versus counter. That near nick with the plasma, but unfortunately with um, both Wolf, Falco, and Star, and a Star Fox, their projectiles, similar to Korns, all have Paralysis. If you get hit with those, you are going to get paralyzed and you're not going to be able to do anything. And Wolf immediately just like not relenting off of anything. Trying to get as much damage. Again with the shockwave, able to hit Wolf for dam minimal damage, but still damage. Pretty good parry from Peyton's end. A lot of dodging now, but looks like Wolf is trying to play a bit of zoner. 
little bit of lag. We should be back here. And I Ooh. think that's going to be it. Aren't you? No. Wait, it's still going. Yeah, it looks like someone, sounds like someone managed to recover. Looks like it was Wolf who managed to recover. Now, both of these characters do have very good recoveries. If, if Peyton can take down Wolf as is, though, she will get her health back, but we'll have to start with one stock. So can she get Wolf down? It looks like Wolf is... Uh, that is gonna be it. Wolf wins. The looks of him with that matchup right there, it looked like Wolf excelled in more like close quarters combat, like closer range. Whereas Corrin uh, excelled at the more long range attacks. So all Wolf had to do was like close that distance and take that win. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for a first match though, for the, the Smash team, I thought that they played very well. Um, that Wolf is just an insane player. I remember I things talked to Mason before the, a couple days ago, and Alma has a very good Smash team. So to go up against probably one of the top teams in the GLDC as their first match is already intimidating, but I think they handled it very well. But I am very proud of them. Even though this is a loss, they managed to really put up all of their own. I know that um, Peyton, like, and Zach and Mason, like, all being able to at least get that wolf down the first time and then just working through the rest of the team. Like, that was that was great for Zach, because... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, we still got to give a shout-out to Zach about how he played in, in game one and just doing a lot of caring there. But here's the good news, and this is for good news for everyone else, too. If you enjoyed that, we have more Smash coming at you. Because in about 20 or so minutes, our Smash team is back and they'll be playing against Ball and Wallace. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just take a small break, get things set up for the Ball and Wallace match. I will unfortunately have to take off because I have to take care of some things, but I'll be back later. But Jackie and, Co and Corey are going to be able to take care of you guys. So, you are in amazing hands. But... Just as a reminder, for all the latest updates with what's going on with Married College Esports, you can follow us here on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. So hang on for a little bit. We'll be back in about 20 minutes as our Smash team will return to play against Baldwin Wallace. So thank you so much. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 